I'm Christy and welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you've never been here before, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So today I wanted to do a kind of different video. Um, I get a lot of questions about my bookshelves or comments about wanting to see the books on the shelves. And so I thought it would be fun to do this sort of series where I showcase different sections of my shelves. So instead of doing an entire bookshelf tour, which maybe I will one day, um, but until then I thought it'd be fun to do these little author highlights of certain sections of my shelves because I do collect a lot of um, the same authors like books. I thought it would be fun to start off with Lorraine Heath, which of course is my favorite historical romance author. Um, she's the one I've read the most books of and that I have um, just about all of her books. I maybe don't have one or two, um, which I will talk about when I get to them. On top of being a book reader and especially like a historical romance reader, I'm also a book collector. So I love collecting and finding first editions of books or like the ones with the original step backs and all of those fun things. I just love all of the original like clinch art and just all of the step back moments and just having those early or first editions on my shelves just makes me super happy. Um, and then yeah, so I wanted to start with Lorraine Heath because I have pretty much all of her books. So I have been reading Lorraine Heath's books for probably two and a half years um, at this point. I do try to take my time with her books but of course I love them so much too so I do binge like a series here and there and um, try to take breaks so I don't get through them all. Um, I'm almost finished reading her entire backlist. At this point I have read 50 at least 50 of her historical romances and so I have just a couple left to go. So first I'm going to start with her Texas trilogy which is one of her western historical romance series. So this is Texas Destiny book one in the series. This is actually a reprint but I really love the art and couple on this cover um, compared to this is the original copy. So on this one as you can see it has the shiny raised lettering and it's kind of embossed there on the print so it is a first edition. So the Texas series follows the Lee family, which are three brothers. Um, they're all named after Texas cities. So we have Austin, Houston, and Dallas, and each of the brothers get their own book. Book one starts off with a mail order bride situation. Um, the heroine's coming to be betrothed to one brother, but on her journey back to their home, she ends up falling for one of the other brothers. And so this is their story. So book two in the Texas series is Texas Glory. Again, this is the reprint cover. I do have the original cover here. Um, I just like the newer editions a lot better with the couple on there. So this one follows one of the other brothers in the series and it is his marriage of convenience. Um, the heroine in this book, her brothers and father have kind of held her prisoner her whole life. They haven't let her out. They kind of you know, try to scare her into thinking the outside world is just dangerous. And so eventually her father ends up actually bartering her away to the hero of this book to get access to like water and for his crops and land and stuff like that on his farm. So yeah, this is a good one as well. And then book three in the series is Texas Splendor. So there's that. And then this is the original cover. In this book we follow the youngest Lee brother. The one thing I love about this series is it follows a lot of time with the family. From book two to this book we have five years later. He ends up getting locked up and sent to prison which the events of that go down in book two so I definitely recommend reading the series in order. But when he comes out assuming the woman he went away for was waiting for him he finds out she married his best friend while he was locked up. He ends up finding a new heroine and it is his story. And then Lorraine wrote this novella, so it's super small, um, Texas Legacy, which is a like 3.5. It's a novella for the Lee family series. She gets a lot of questions a lot about the family and the series, and so she said that she revisited them 20 years after the original book came out, Texas Destiny. This is a second generation story. The couple in this one is actually the daughter of one of the couples of the original series and her ro romance with her kind of like adopted brother. So it's got that forbidden angst vibes. They were raised together and it is their romance. It's really sweet. And then you also get to see like a conclusion to the entire series and the family, which is just a lot of fun. So in this Texas series, you end up spending 30 plus years with a family, which I just loved about this series. So next up is Lorraine's Rogues in Texas series. And book one starts with a rogue in Texas. This series has really gorgeous step backs, which you can see right there those gorgeous double page step backs. So in this series we follow three Englishmen whose fathers 
they're kind of like the wayward sons and their fathers sent them away from England, shipped them out to Texas and was like, go find your own path, your own way, um, make men out of yourselves out there in Texas. So each of the three friends have their own book. Um, in book one, it does have the heroine. She is a single parent and a widowed heroine and it was their romance. And so in classic Lorraine Heath fashion, we have tons of twists and turns. We have a lot of drama and angst and a lot of passion um, since this series is set in Texas. Like we have hurricanes, snake bites, um, cattle drives, like just all the things that could happen um, in a Western historical. So the second book in the series is Never Love a Cowboy. This is actually my favorite in the series. And again, we have that gorgeous double page step back right there. I love the horses in the background as well. This is one of the other friends who was sent to Texas, and it is his romance with the saloon owner's daughter of the town that they are in. They end up going on a cattle drive, and she wants to invest and be involved as well, and so it's their romance. This one has a lot of angst, um, a lot of, like, trauma from both of their past, and it was just really beautiful seeing these two kind of um, tortured souls come together. And then the last book in the trilogy is Never Marry a Cowboy. I love the sunset on this one. And this one has a back step back. So that's that gorgeous shot. I just love it so much. And this one is probably the angstiest in the trilogy. Um, Lorraine Heath really brings the feels with this one. This book, it has been five years since the three friends um, ended up in Texas. The hero in this one, he was the second born twin son of an earl and so when he was born his father like even scarred his cheek with like a you know hot poker stick to be able to tell the twins apart and which one was the rightful heir um, in the father's eyes and then um, if that wasn't bad enough he also grew up and loved his twin brother's wife um, and so he ends up in Texas of course and then it is his romance with the heroine and this one has a really unique setup and this one, the heroine's brother actually ends up coming to the hero and is like, hey, my sister's lifelong dream is to be a bride, be married, but she's actually dying of consumption. Will you marry her and, you know, fulfill her wish to become a bride, keep it platonic, you know, just until she passes? And so it ends up being their romance. It's really angsty, really beautiful. And um, of course there is HEA, like these are all, <laughs> all of these end happily. One thing about Lorraine is like, you never know how she's going to end the books or how we're going to get to that happy happily ever after moment but she always does deliver so yeah so that is the rogues in texas series one thing lorraine does a lot is she has a lot of spin-off series you'll see familiar characters again and again make appearances in other of her books and series she also has a lot of like second generation stories and so this next series is called the daughters of fortune and it is actually a spinoff slash some of the children of the couples of the Rogues in Texas series that I just showed um, make appearances in this series. And the first book being The Outlaw and the Lady. This is the front and this is the step back on the back. So I'm actually reading this series right now. This first book, um, it follows the hero. He is an outlaw. He's actually robbing a bank when the story starts and he sees the heroine walking around town and assumes that she saw him and so he kidnaps her. <laughs> And later on, he finds out that the heroine is actually blind, so she didn't witness any of his crimes, but decides to take him with him and his brothers to his family's home. And in this one, the heroine is actually the daughter of one of the couples of the Rogues in Texas series, so it was a lot of fun seeing her parents in this one. Um, the other couples from the Rogues in Texas series making appearances in this as well. And the second book in the Daughters of Fortune series is To Marry an Heiress. So this is the pretty cover on this one. And then the step back is that gorgeous wedding moment. So in this one, we actually end up leaving Texas and we go to England. The heroine is an American heiress and her father takes her to England to find a husband. He ends up meeting with the hero. When the story starts, the hero is an earl and needs money and needs a wife. And so the heroine's father makes a deal with the hero to marry his daughter in like a marriage of convenience. And his only stipulation is that the hero never tell the heroine that they made a deal. So her father wants the hero to kind of pretend and woo and show that he's courting or falling in love with the heroine. And the heroine is definitely very spirited and fiery. She does not like ballrooms. She'd rather be outside. So when her and the hero meet at one of the balls in London, she kind of sees right through his ruse right away and is like, hey, what did my dad promise you? Because like, 
you know, let's get down to this. Like, what are you really doing? So the hero actually tells her right away, you know, what's going on. And so the heroine is actually, you know, not against it. And she's like, you know what, let's get married. Like I'm 26. I want to have children. Like, let's just do this. They get married really early on into the book. And then of course, in classic Lorraine Heath fashion, um, they share like a passionate wedding night. And then the day after their wedding is when that other shoe drops and like all the twists and things start happening from there. There's more going on. Some things are revealed. Um, the hero ends up taking the heroine back to his estate in the country. So the hero is widowed. He has two children children and so the heroine's relationship with his children was really nice to see and I really just loved the slow burn and the partnership that the hero and heroine form while on his country estate together. The third book in the series is Love with a Scandalous Lord and I love this step back moment that close-up shot of the couple in the garden. This one I'm actually reading right now so I don't know too much about it yet. Next is the fourth book in the series An Invitation to Seduction. I love the color of the gown on this one with the gold. And then on the back we have the couple close up with their faces and all of that as well. And again, I haven't read this one yet, but I will be getting to it soon. And those are the four books in the Daughters of Fortune series. Starts out as a Western historical romance um, following the rogues in Texas, and then we end up going to England. Next up, which actually follows um, the Daughters of Fortune series, is called the Lost Lords series. This is a series I haven't read yet either. So this is book one, As in Earl Desires. And then these have the gorgeous back step backs as well. I love that like monochrome look. Book two is A Matter of Temptation. This one has the greens. And then again, a step back on the back with the gorgeous green monochrome look. And book three in this Lost Lords series is Promise Me Forever. And this one we have the couple on that gorgeous blue background. And that is Lorraine Heath's Lost Lords series, not to be confused with her Lost Lords of Pembroke series, which will be coming up next. We have her Rogues and Roses series. Book one is a Duke of Her Own, and this is another series that I still need to read. And this one is just super pretty. I love the red gown on the heroine. And of course, we love a shirtless hero. <laughs> Book two in Rogues and Roses is just wicked enough. And then we have that little moment right there with the couple. So that is the Rogues and Roses series. So next up is Lorraine's London's Greatest Lovers series, with book one being Passions of a Wicked Earl. So this one is actually a second chance romance between a married couple. The hero and heroine grew up together. Their marriage was arranged um, before she was even born, and so they have a lot of history together. But their wedding day ended up going horribly, and so they split then and have been living separately since. So now they're back together and living under the same roof for the first time in their marriage, and they have to kind of come to terms with what actually happened all those years ago on their wedding night and realize that there is actually a spark between them. So with this book, um, if like other women slash happenings, drama is not your thing, probably skip this one <laughs> as half of the book the hero does have a mistress still and the other half deals with some drama from the fallout of that relationship with said mistress. And book two is Pleasures of a Notorious Gentleman. I love the blue with the heroine's red hair. So this romance is between like the black sheep um, second son of an earl who's the brother of the hero of book one and then the single mother nurse is the heroine they actually met a couple of years ago and then it ends up being their romance and the hero actually ends up going away to war he comes back wounded scarred and cannot remember anything from the past two years of his life the heroine ends up showing up at the family's home with his son in her arms after she read that the hero died at war and then yeah imagine her surprise when she finds out that that news was false he's actually alive home and determined to marry her and do the honorable thing. <laughs> it has a lot of scars, um, secrets, trauma from memories of the war or no memories in the hero's case. We do get to see the couple of book one make an appearance in this one as well as the hero of book three. All the heroes in this series are brothers. So this one is definitely not a light read. Um, I personally wouldn't say any of Lorraine's books really are light. And book three in the series, which is arguably the fan favorite of the series is Waking Up with the Duke. This is probably one you see talked about the most from this series. I love the purple and gold there. So this one is classic Lorraine. She takes a completely unique bonkers 
like wild sounding plot and then just absolutely delivers on emotions, feels, the angst, passion, um, the romance and chemistry with the characters. There's a great character development in this one. So this one has a very unique setup. So in this one, if angst is your game, <laughs> pick this book up. The hero of the book is a duke and the story opens with his friend who's also like his, I believe, distant cousin, um, reaches out to him and is like, hey, um, you need to repay a debt when you cause that accident that led to me losing my legs and unable to perform my husbandly duties with my wife. I need you to step it up and get my wife knocked up. <laughs> So yep, that is the plot of this book. I know it sounds pretty wild, but again, um, Lorraine Heath writes these characters and just makes it so believable and so good. Very angsty. And so that is the London's Greatest Lovers series. And so the next series I'm going to talk about is The Lost Lords of Pembroke. Book one is She Tempts the Duke. I love red and gold together, and so this cover really speaks to me. I love the heroine's gorgeous red hair as well. This series follows three brothers and the premise of this series is three young heirs are imprisoned in a tower by their uncle who plans to kill them. So the young heirs, they actually get help and escape, um, but they're not seen or heard from for over a decade. So it's 12 years later when the lost lords of Pembroke show back up on the scene. This one starts out with the hero. He is 14. Um, he has a twin brother and then they have their younger brother, um, and they're all imprisoned in the tower by their uncle, who they're pretty sure plans to kill them as they fear he did the same thing to their father. They're a greedy uncle. You know, he wants the dukedom. He wants the titles, the estates, all for himself. And, you know, absolutely nothing will stop him. So in this one, the prologue, the hero is 14 and the heroine is 12 years old. They have been best friends since childhood. They live on neighboring lands and she actually sneaks up to the tower and releases the three brothers. So then the story cuts to 12 years later. Um, much has changed, you know, since the Pembroke brothers have been missing. Heroine is now 24. She's engaged when the Lost Lords show back up. Hero is back to claim his title, claim his land, get back his dukedom and what is rightfully his. So in this one, the hero, he went off to war when they disappeared. He comes back scarred. He even has an eye patch after losing an eye. Yeah, this one was very angsty. We have that scarred kind of broody hero that becomes obsessed with the estate and the past and then the heroine kind of brings him back to the present a lot which i loved seeing so book two in the series is lord of temptation this is the twin brother of the hero of book one the hero in this one when the boys all split when they were younger he ended up taking off to the seas and becoming a privateer so now that he's back on land he's kind of restless and you know longs for the sea and adventure and so he ends up meeting the heroine which is an earl's daughter um, she hasn't been able to return to society since her fiance left for war four years ago and so she wants to visit him one last time before moving on with her life and she enlists the hero to take her on this journey so this one has some great angst on the high seas, a lot of forced proximity on the ship with the hero, you know, telling her like, hey, I have to protect you. You have to stay in my room with me, um, all of that goodness. So yeah, this one was really good. Of course, all these books in the series are angsty and like some trauma because of what, you know, happened in the brothers' past. Next book in this series is actually a novella, Deck the Halls with Love. Super short. Um, this is like 2.5 in the series, so it follows the hero is a character we've already met in the series and it's his romance that he gets so of course as you can tell by the title and the cover this one it takes place in winter and it has some really great moments so he steals like a dance at a ball um we get to see the couple of book two make an appearance in this one there's some ice skating on a frozen pond a snowstorm you know forcing them to stay in that abandoned castle overnight um just a lot of fun christmasy moments in this one and then the last book in the series, book three, is Lord of Wicked Intentions. This is the step back on that one. This is the only book in the series that has a step back. On this one, this is the youngest brother. He was left at a workhouse when he was 10 years old and had a really rough childhood on the streets. So he has a lot of um, kind of baggage and things to work through with how he feels about his brothers and kind of their whole traumatic past. Then the heroine of this one, she was actually an Earl's illegitimate daughter, but she grew up like really loved and spoiled by her father who took her in after her mother's death. But when her father passes away, her half-brother becomes the Earl and he was always really jealous of the attention their father gave to her over the years. 
So even though he promised their father that he would look after her, you know, care and protect for her, um, he instead, as soon as their father passes, he quickly sells her off as a mistress to the highest bidder. She doesn't know any of this, which was really sad to see because she's, you know, thinking her brother's taking her somewhere and finds out he's actually doing this to her. And this one, the hero, um, is actually the one who gets her and wants her as his mistress. And of course, we have a great epilogue in this one for the whole series. So that is the Lost Lords of Pembroke series. Next up is Scoundrels of St. James. This series has four books and a novella. Um, this is probably Lorraine's most popular series. It's one that a lot of people love and recommend. It's definitely a good place to start with her books as this series um, has like two spinoff series as well. And the series follows a group of childhood friends. They were raised on the streets um, after a man kind of taught them how to steal and live on the street and back all their fines and treasures and like money to him. And book one in the series is In Bed with the Devil. And that is the step back on the back. Yeah, this series is a little darker. Um, the hero definitely had a rough start to life. Um, his parents were killed in front of him when he was growing up. He was then stolen and sold into near slavery, um, stealing on the streets. He served in prison at just eight years old. So a lot of things happened in his past. He was actually only saved from the hangsman's noose as a child when an earl came forth claiming that he was the long lost presumed dead grandson of said earl. So he was saved off of the streets and kind of this earl raised him and a couple of the other um, characters in the next kind of taught him the ways of society. And the hero in this one, he kind of has a rumor in his past uh, that he has murdered someone. So the heroine comes to him one day. He thinks she's there for a good time and is shocked when she informs him that she's actually there because she needs someone dispensed with and heard he's the man for the job. <laughs> so yeah, it is their story. Um, definitely read this series in order. Second book in the series is Between the Devil and Desire. And that is the step back on the back. And again, these books have very dark themes in them. There is content warning for, of course, violence, um, murder, rape, selling of children, um, pedophilia. Oh so yeah, all the characters in these definitely have dark pasts. Seeing them all get their HEAs was super satisfying. Um, I cried in quite a few of these books. They just are really special. And the hero in this one is Jack Dodger. He owns Dodger's Drawing Room. So him and his gaming club that he owns makes appearances in a ton of Lorraine Heath books. And this one, he, the hero was actually, his mother sold him when he was five years old and he eventually ended up on the streets being raised um, and taught to steal and pickpocket with other children, which are, of course are the other characters in the series. This one, the hero ends up finding out he needs to be in attendance at the reading of a will for a duke that he barely knew, so he's very surprised. And he finds out that the late duke gave the rest of his estate to Jack, as well as the guardianship of his five-year-old son. Um, yeah, and so he ends up meeting that Duke's widow, which is the heroine of this book. And the heroine is definitely shocked and a little um, infuriated to learn that she's they're going to be under the guardianship of Jack. The third book in the series is Surrender to the Devil. I love the purple on this one. And then we have that gorgeous shot on the back of the couple. That red hair on the purple background just really pops. So this one is Franny Darling's book. And Franny is actually a partner in um, Jack Dodger's successful club, um, Dodger's Drawing Room. She works as the bookkeeper there for the business. And the hero in this one is the brother of one of the heroines um, in the previous books. And when he meets Franny one day, he's like, I want her, want her for my mistress. He actually approaches her and is like, would you ever do that? And she's like, um, yeah, I'll think about it. She's kind of equally taken with him and it is their slow burn kind of dancing around one another and growing close. This one is really great. I loved seeing the hero's growth throughout here. Um, Franny kind of opens his eyes to a side of London he's never um, given much thought to and seeing him care for the orphan, share all of his travel stories with them that she um, actually opens an orphanage house and yeah it's their story. Really tender, really beautiful. So book four is Midnight Pleasures with a Scoundrel. Love that mint green on the cover and the step back for this one. So this one follows James Swindler. He became an orphan when he was eight years old um, and he grew up on the streets with the rest of the characters in the books. Now he works as a detective for Scotland Yard. And that is how he first meets the heroine. He's tasked to follow a mysterious woman who um, is suspected of like nefarious deeds. 
and it is their romance. And the last part of the series, which a lot of people skip, but I think you should read it because I really love it. This is The Last Wicked Scoundrel. It is a novella part of the series. And this one is William Graves. He is the doctor of the group. He makes appearances in multiple Lorraine Heath series, um, even her most recent series, Once Upon a Dukedom, and just a ton of her series. If you ever see Dr. Graves, that is the hero of this book. This one, the hero was a grave robber. Um, all of the characters in this series, you'll notice their last names kind of describe what they did on the streets. So in this William Graves, he, you know, did grave robbing. We had Jack Dodger, who was really good at dodging and pitpocketing on the streets. Um, James Swindler, he was obviously, you know, swindling people out of money. So all of their names are kind of clues to what they did as children on the streets. And so in this one, you will definitely get more out of this novella if you read the entire series as the heroine is from book one. She is a widowed um, single parent heroine. This one has mutual pining, which I just adore and love. Yeah, definitely recommend reading this one if you haven't. And so that is the Scoundrels of St. James series. Next up is a spinoff series from the Scoundrels of St. James series. So the next series is called The Scandalous Gentleman of St. James. Book one is When the Duke Was Wicked. This is one of my all-time favorite Lorraine Heath reads. There is the step back on that one. Love that little bench park scene. Yeah, this is the start of the Scandalous Gentlemen of St. James series. This follows children of the Scoundrels of St. James series. I definitely recommend reading this series after you've read the other series because you'll see the parents again and kind of all those connections will make a lot more sense. And this book made me cry multiple times, starting off with the prologue, which the hero writes in a, like a journal. The hero has been widowed when the story starts. The hero and heroine, their families have been close friends their entire lives, and so they've always shared a really close relationship. He is nine years older than her and has was always kind of like her protector growing up. She comes to him now with a problem. Um, she's the daughter of a duke, comes with an enormous dowry and land and coin. And like with so many men vying for her affection, she wants to be sure that they're, um, you know, there for her heart and for the right reasons instead of just her money. So she comes to the hero who he's become kind of a recluse after the loss of his beloved wife. And she wants his help because she's like, you've been in love before. I think you can help tell me when a man's actually interested in me um, as opposed to just my money. And so in this one, the heroine, she always did have a crush on him as a child growing up, but now she is genuinely coming to him just for help as an adult. And so she kind of sees this chance as well to kind of help her friend um, come back to life in society, um, as well as, you know, help her out. And so when they're spending time together, he starts to see her in a new light. He's really intrigued by her, always appreciated how she just does, you know, whatever she wants and owns who she is. The hero kind of has that classic battle going on with himself of wanting to love again, but losing someone close, you know, he doesn't really want to take that chance again. And it was just really great. I loved the friends to lovers aspect, as well as just that slow burn and angst of, you know, like, will they, won't they get together? Will he give in? And I just loved seeing him see that he could love again, um, you know, that he doesn't have to replace his wife who he loved in the past, that it's kind of a different type of love and that he's a different man than he was back then. And it's okay to love differently now. The second book in the series is Once More, My Darling Rogue. Love the black and gold on this one. This one has this step back. And this one is actually an amnesia romance. So this one has some great found family moments. The hero was taken in and raised by a family um, off of the streets. So it is his romance with his sister's best friend, who is the heroine. The heroine has kind of always looked down on him um, as like less than. So when he finds her one day kind of passed out um, and has no memory of who she is, he decides to tell her that, yeah, you're uh, my housekeeper. So of course he feels pretty petty and promises to reveal the truth eventually but he's having just too much fun having her play his maid this had a very like overboard um movie <laughs> vibe next up is the duke and the lady in red this is book three in her scandalous gentleman of saint james there is the step back on that one love a red dress moment and this book is really great. This one I actually had a hard time connecting with in the beginning, um, but it's actually kind of meant to be that way. And you find out about halfway in what's really going on in the story. Um, and it definitely flipped my feelings for the book and I ended up really loving this one. Both of the characters in this book have just such emotional depth um, that it gets explored in the second half of the Yeah, the synopsis for this one is like only half of the story. So I would definitely go into this one um, not knowing much and you will fall in love with it too. 
And book four is an affair with a notorious heiress. And in this one, the hero is a future duke, and he knows he's going to have to find himself um, a duchess for in the future. And so in this one, the hero, he decides he wants to only take a wife with an impeccable reputation who stays out of the gossip sheets. So in this one, the hero actually makes a deal with the heroine's uncle, and he says that he will pretend to be seen courting the younger sister in hopes that other men of Tawn will kind of become interested in her. But the heroine of the book is actually the older sister, the one with the, of course, notorious reputation. So the heroine in this one is American, and she kind of sent shockwaves through the Tawn when she divorced her first husband. This one has very much like kind of Julia Quinn's The Viscount Who Loved Me vibes as far as like the, you know, older sister looking out for her younger sister, um, not trusting the guy, but then, you know, falling for the hero herself instead. The last book in the series is like 4.5, so it is again novella length. This is Gentlemen Prefer Heiresses. This one is that younger sister of the heroine of the previous book. Um, the heroine in this one, she is an American heiress. She is determined to marry a titled gentleman, preferably a duke or an earl. And so the hero of this one, he is a second son. And so with no need to provide an heir, he actually had like zero plans of ever marrying um, until he meets his new sister-in-law's youngest sister, which is the heroine of this book. And so that is the Scandalous Gentleman of St. James series. So next up is the Hellions of Havisham series. The series does have some light ties to the Scoundrels of St. James series as the first book follows one of the children of those original couples again. So this is Falling into Bed with the Duke, the first book in the Hellions of Havisham series. There is the step back of that one. I love this like chartreuse green color that the heroine is wearing. So again, you will actually probably get more out of this book if you've read the Scoundrels of St. James series as the heroine is the daughter of one of those couples and you see her parents a lot in this. So this one has a really great start. The heroine, she has had six unsuccessful seasons and so she's kind of tired of the, all these like fortune hungry suitors um, and she decides, you know what, I'm going to choose a spinsterhood going forward instead. But before she does that, she's like, you know what, I don't want to give up a whole night of pleasure before I go. So I'm going to don a mask, hide my identity and visit um, this club in the hopes of leaving her virginity behind. It is at this club that she, or, you know, should I say her legs, catch the attention of the hero, who is a duke. He's also a photographer and really taken with her shapely legs. So she is actually wearing a mask, but she knows his identity. She stays a mystery to him for a bit. And so when they run into one another later at society events, he's kind of taken with her boldness and convinced she's that secret lady he's been meeting with at the club. So he has to actually kind of prove himself to her that he wants her for who she is and not just her fortune as like so many men before him have been after for her. So this series, The Hellions of Havisham, it actually follows three boys who are all raised by a reclusive Marquess who all become known as the Hellions of Havisham. So the hero of this is one of those boys. Book two in the series is The Earl Takes All. This one is a lot of people's favorite. Um, one you might have heard before is the step back on this one. I love that the heroine is wearing black. You don't see that a lot on historical romances. There is that. So the hero of this book, he is half of the Hellions of Havisham, um, four boys who were raised by like the Mad Marquess. Him and his brother were twins. So like I said before, Lorraine always has some wild bonkers plots. And so this one um, is case in point. So this one, the hero, he ends up taking over his twin brother's identity and life for a couple of months to ensure that his deceased brother's wife, the heroine, doesn't lose the baby she's currently carrying. And then on top of that, he has always wanted his brother's wife and has always kind of pined after her. And this one is just super angsty, super emotional, um, a really great book. The third book in the series is The Viscount and the Vixen. In this one, the hero is the son of the Mad Marquess. He saw how his father became really reclusive after his mother died during childbirth of him. And so he's never wanted to fall in love because he saw how devastated his father was um, upon losing his wife. And so the hero has vowed to never love as well. 
So one day the heroine shows up at the house and she's like, hey, I'm responding to this advert in the paper to become the wife of the Marquess, which is the hero's father. And the hero is, of course, stunned. And he's like, um, I do not want my father marrying this obvious like fortune hunter. Uh, so he steps in and decides to marry her instead. <laughs> So this one, the heroine is actually not a fortune hunter, but she's kind of seeking some safety and security from things that happened in her past. And so it becomes this marriage of convenience, um, lots of secrets, and of course, angst in this one. And then the last one in this series is a novella, it's super short. So it is when the Marquess falls, like 3.5 of the series. Definitely recommend reading this in order. So throughout the entire series, you know that the Mad Marquess, as people call him, um, it became mad, quote unquote, because he you know, lost his wife um, and has just been heartbroken ever since. And so this is a, their story. So it's very bittersweet because you know in the first book of the series that his wife passed away. In the series, you know, the Marquess has been a single parent raising, you know, not only his own son, but three orphaned boys who were his friend's children. And this is, like I said, very bittersweet. It'll make you probably cry, but it's just a really beautiful story. As him and his wife, they knew each other from when they were like, children um and it's their whole entire romance their marriage um when she had their son and then of course when all four boys end up being raised by him so it definitely comes full circle um it explains a lot that was happening throughout the series and it's just a really beautiful like you know eternal romance and so that is the hellions of havisham series next series is sins for all seasons book one being beyond scandal and desire so this series follows children who were kind of aristocrats, by blows, or illegitimate children who were all um, sent away to like baby farms and end up being raised by a woman. So this one definitely, this series deals with kind of that darker side of the aristocrats and how they would send their by blows away, um, how baby farming was handled back then. And these are all really great like class difference romances. So in this one we follow Mick True Love and he started from nothing but because of like his hard work he became a successful businessman. He even owns a hotel. He was the illegitimate son of a duke and so he is determined to seek revenge against the man who will still not acknowledge him to this day. He wants to take everything um, from said duke starting with ruining his son's life stealing away that son's fiance um, while he's at it. And so that's how he ends up falling for the heroine. The second book in the series is When a Duke Loves a Woman. And this one again follows one of those orphaned children. She was abandoned on a doorstep when she was a baby um, and raised by the woman there. And she is now a spinster and the proud owner of a tavern. So one day when leaving the tavern, she finds a like injured gentleman um, shows up in the alleyway. So she sees him getting attacked in the alleyway and kind of steps in and fights off and rescues him and nurses him back to health, which is like the first 20% of the book. She finds out that he is a duke who was jilted at the altar. And so it ends up being their romance. Next up is book three, The Scoundrel in Her Bed. And this one is a really great second chance romance hero and heroine met when she was just 15 years old and so it's like years later um, that they end up meeting again so there are definitely flashbacks in this one they both have a lot of hurts from their past and kind of discuss you know what separated them all those years ago and this one was just an emotional journey and I liked seeing how the story unfolded Next up is The Duchess in His Bed. This is book four in the Sins for All Seasons series so in this one the heroine is actually a widowed duchess She's never known passion in her life, so one night she ends up at the Elysium Club, which the hero owns, and it actually caters to, like, women's fantasies. There's even a room in the club that is just a dedicated to feet massages. So she finds herself at this club three nights after her husband has passed away. She finds herself kind of in a tricky spot. Right after finding out her husband passed, her brother actually tells her that they're also broke. And to gain access or funds to her late husband's ducal estate, that she, ne she needs to find herself pregnant quickly. And then she's going to have to claim the baby is her late husband, the duke's child. So yeah, again, another classic one where Lorraine Heath takes a kind of bonkers wild plot, throws in some angst, and <laughs> makes it work. Book five is The Earl Takes a Fancy. The heroine in this one, her name is Fancy. So the heroine in this one, she owns a bookshop thanks to um, her one of her older brothers. And she's the youngest of the family. And so her mom and siblings have all been determined to see her married off to a nobleman one day. They want her to have just like the best of everything in the world. 
her siblings, in fact, like all paid for her to go to schooling and finishing school. They paid for her to have a season. Um, they all chipped in funds to even provide like a loud, large dowry for her. But then of course, all Fancy wants is a marriage of love like all of her siblings have found. The hero in this one, he is widowed. He actually lost his wife like a year ago and when the story starts and he's kind of shocked when a letter his late wife pinned is published on the anniversary of her death. The letter is saying like what a wonderful husband he was and all these women should want to snatch him up now. So he all of a sudden finds himself, you know, the catch of the season. And so he decides he wants to escape his London home and all these women flocking to him. And he rents a flat from Make True Love, which is of course one of Fancy's brothers. Then he ventures out to the bookshop one day and ends up meeting Fancy, um, his new neighbor and the bookshop seller. Book six, the last book in the Sins for All Seasons series is Beauty Tempts the Beast. In this one, the hero's nickname is Beast, and then the heroine is a duke's daughter who kind of her family fell from grace. She is actually one of the Stanwyck children, which if you've read the series following this, um, Lorraine's Once Upon a Dukedom series, um, her brothers have a books in those. So that series does come after um, events in this book. So in this one, the heroine grew up, you know, kind of always as the perfect lady. She was just destined to marry a wealthy lord until betrayal in her family left her family penniless. They lost their estates, their name, their titles, their fortune, and of course their home and friends along the way. The heroine decides, you know, she's a girl with a plan and if she can learn to seduce men, she can gain power over them and make a return to society on her terms. So she decides the hero beast is the perfect one to, um, you know, instruct her on seduction. This one has a great little epilogue for the entire series. Um, we get like a glimpse 30 to 40 years in the future for the entire family, which was a really sweet and special and a great way to end the series. And so that is the Sins for All Seasons series. And then Lorraine's current series is the Once Upon a Dukedom series with book one being a scoundrel of my heart. I love this book. It was one of my favorite um, new releases of last year. This book has great longing and angst. Um, the heroine, she needs to marry a titled gentleman to inherit the seaside cottage that has been left behind by her beloved grandmother. So each season she knows it's a titled gentleman or bust for her. And she's always kind of had a push and pull relationship with her best friend's brother. And during one of her stays at their home, they start to talk and actually get along when she opens up to him about her dreams of, you know, owning the cottage. And then he shares a secret dream with her as well. He is a second son and he wants to open a club that'll cater to those society deems as less than, like second sons, um, self-made men who've gained their own fortunes, ladies on the shelf, so to speak, and daughters and sons of those like all outside of um, the aristocracy. And he has always had a thing for the heroine, but he knows she cannot slash, you know, will not marry a second son because of um, that cottage she wants. And this book is just really beautiful and emotional and definitely recommend this one. Second book in the series is The Duchess Hunt. This book also just came out last year in 2021. This one, the hero is a duke in need of a wife and the heroine is actually his secretary. So they've worked together for eight years. And since she's worked for him for years, she's really become like his right hand woman um, for like all aspects of his life. He's having her kind of help him find his duchess. But the more he realizes what he wants in a wife, the more he sees how she's actually, you know, already that partner for him. And then the third book in this series is um, The Return of the Duke, which comes out on July 26th. But I did read an arc of this one. This one has a like spy espionage trope. Girl in this one, he was once the heir apparent to like a very prestigious and powerful dukedom. But once his father was found guilty of treason with some like assassination plot against the queen, the family was stripped of their titles, estates, and possessions. And so his sister was the one in Sense for All Seasons. And then also his other brother um, was the first book in the series, Scoundrel of My Heart. So this one picks up one year after his father was hanged for said treason. And the hero sets out to find um, any possible people that his father might have conspired with because he thinks that they should all pay like his father had to. He ends up at the home of the heroine who was presumably his father's mistress. But of course, classic Lorraine Heath, there is a lot more to the story. Um, like I said, this one deals a lot with spies and kind of espionage. And so yeah, that is this book. Lorraine Heath's next series, um, she's already announced it. It's gonna be the Chessman series. Um, I believe there's a title for the first book. I can't recall it because it just came out like earlier this week, but I'll put the info up here. And you do meet the characters for this series um, in the Once Upon a Dukedom series. Next two books, Avon had like a true romance series for teens, which you can see. 
right there. So this is book one, Amelia and the Outlaw. I have not read these. They're very short though. The second book is Samantha and the Cowboy. And this is part of a series. So as you can see, this is book one and 10. There were like multiple authors um, that did this teen series. I have a couple of the other ones. I know like Beverly Jenkins did some and a bunch of other authors. And then this is a Christmas anthology that Lorraine Heath was a part of. Um, it's called A Christmas to Remember. So also Lisa Clayfus, Megan Frampton, and Vivian Lorette have stories in this one. This anthology actually just features Deck the Halls with Love um, novella in here for Lorraine Heath's book. Really love the simplicity of this cover. Just a really cute like Christmassy winter um, look to it. I have read this anthology. I read it last year. All the rest of the novellas in this series as well. So these next few books are Lorraine's like um, original Western historical romances. These were all published like 1994 um, to like 1997, I believe. So the first up is Sweet Lullaby. This is the original cover. It is embossed. Um, it was part of the Homespun series that multiple authors um, wrote books for. Lorraine Heath actually told me recently on Instagram that this series, all of the covers of these series were supposed to be like quilt inserts that the um, publisher was going to put together. She doesn't think anything ever came of that though, but that explains um, the cover for this one. But I will show the ebook cover for this as well, which has that classic clinch cover. So I just read this one last month and really loved it. Um, it is a Western historical. This one is super sad and emotional. The hero has a very sad backstory, which you see starting off with the prologue and then multiple flashbacks throughout the book. And so he's always been very lonely, doesn't have a family. Um, he's working as a ranch hand at the heroine father's ranch. And so one day her father calls um, the hero Jake into his office and is like, hey, what do you think of my daughter Rebecca? And <laughs> Jake is like, well, she's like the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. And the rancher is like, um, well, yeah, she's knocked up. So uh, I need you to marry her because her dude left her high and dry and knocked up. And so it ends up being a marriage of convenience situation with Jake and Rebecca. And this one is very angsty um, because, of course, Jake has feelings for Rebecca, but he's just kind of, he's one of those very, like, thinks he doesn't deserve much of anything type of hero um, and just super sweet to her and just, you know, he wants to be her friend. And if he's, and he's like, if she ever decides to love me, like, I will just be so grateful and just here for her. Um, he really supports her and even her unborn baby while she's pregnant. Yeah, this one is very angsty and piney. There are some kind of messy choices that happen that kind of just add to that. That emotional angst of the book but I definitely recommend this one. Next up is Parting Gifts. Again this is part of that Homespun series so this is the original cover and then I will show the ebook cover here as well. I just read this one this month and I really loved it. And this one it starts off with the heroine. She is in desperate need of a place to stay. She has bartered away most everything she owns and she's even like bartering away now her virginity when the story starts. She is up in a at a brothel um, trying to auction away her virginity when she meets Charles, a widower who is there. And he decides that, you know, she looks super uncomfortable up there. Like I need to save her. So he ends up purchasing her and is like, hey, I want you to marry me, come back to my inn, help me raise my three children. You know, I'll give you a place to stay, but like, I just want this relationship to be friendship and platonic. She agrees and marries him. They show up at his inn where she meets his brother, Jesse, who actually becomes the hero. So we know from the back of the book and in the story from Jesse and Charles's point of views that Charles is actually dying and he wants just a mother to look after his children. That's why she married, why he married her. But the heroine doesn't know that um, until a lot later. So this one is very emotional and angsty because obviously she's following for her husband's brother um, throughout the book. If cheating of any kind is not your thing, I wouldn't pick this book up. Um, for me personally, I don't mind those type of stories. And especially in the case of this book where, you know, her marriage was platonic. And then, of course, everything that's going on with her husband is that kind of like you know emotional growth slash cheating as well as some kissing when her husband is still alive but yeah this one is very emotional will pull on your heartstrings um definitely cried during this one but a very beautiful um sweet kind of unique historical romance next up is always to remember this is another one of lorraine's um western historical romances um has a really pretty ebook cover that i will show here i am planning on reading this one actually this coming month and we have the ladies man which is another western historical i haven't read this one either but plan to as well 
And then these two books are part of Lorraine Heath's contemporary romance series. Book one is Hard Loving Man. And this one has a step back. So it looks like the... I haven't read this series yet, but I've heard it's pretty good too. So of course we can see the hero is a man in uniform. And then the heroine, I love her like leg here. And then that super fun pose. The second book in that series is Smooth Talking Stranger. Then I have Girls of Flight City. This is also by Lorraine Heath, but it is actually a historical fiction instead of a historical romance. So this one takes place during World War II and kind of focuses on the British Royal Air Force who were actually training and stationed in Texas during the time of the war. And Lorraine also has a couple novellas that I do not own physical copies of. One of them does have a physical copy and then one of them I believe is just um, an ebook only. So the first one is The Reluctant Hero. This is a Western novella. So in this one, the hero is the sheriff and his world kind of gets turned upside down when the heroine arrives in town one day. She is the writer of like some dime novels with titles like Lone Star Lily and the Treacherous Cattle Drive and Lone Star Lily and the Notorious Outlaw. So she tells him that she's in town hoping to find her new hero, um, her new muse for some of her books. And she tells the hero that she wants to use him as her new inspiration for her new hero, a character that she wants to write like a whole series about called Texas Knight. So the hero he continuously tells her like I am not hero material <laughs> but this like grumpy sheriff um he eventually relents and promises her like just one day to shadow him to form her character. So this one is a super short novella it's like 80 to 90 pages and it follows them over the course of a day that she shadows him um to take notes for her new hero material and this one was just really fun like that grumpy hero um sunshiny outgoing heroine not a whole lot of angst going on in this one but i did find myself wishing this was a longer book just to give the characters and their story more time um there is like you know of course that lorraine heath classic twists and turns along the way but otherwise this historical um western is pretty short and sweet and then next is the gunslinger this is a western historical romance novella and in this one, as it says, the hero is a gunslinger or like a gun for hire. He comes to town and there's rumors going about, about, you know, like who is he there to take care of or end. And when he's in the local saloon, a boy runs up to him and is like, hey, I need your help, sir. Like, please come and help me. My sister's in trouble. Like, I want to pay you. Can you come and help me? So the hero is like, no, like I'm already on a job. I don't have time for this. Like, and so he ends up leaving the saloon on his way out. The little boy follows him. And then when they get outside, the hero sees a woman up against a wall with like some men about to assault her. So he jumps in to rescue her, does his whole gunslinging thing. Um, he ends up getting injured as well. And we find out that the boy that is actually his sister that he was wanting help with. So the boy and his sister, who she ends up being the heroine, they end up taking the hero back with them to their house and kind of nursing him back to health. So once he gets better, he actually realizes that the heroine is actually the person that he was hired to take care of. At this point, he's already started to fall, um, kind of, you know, really likes the heroine and her brother. And so he decides, you know what, I'm going to actually protect them from the people who hired me to take her out. <laughs> so it ends up becoming their romance. It's very sweet, um, a little bit of angst, um, definitely some twists along the way because it is Lorraine Heath, of course. And yeah, this one just has some really sweet and swoony quotable moments and just a really nice epilogue. So yeah, those are all of Lorraine Heath's um, historical romances. Um, hope you had fun with this video. Uh, like I said, I want to do more of these with some of the other authors um, on my shelves. Like I know I have tons of Lisa Kleypas and Beverly Jenkins, so I would love to showcase some other authors. I hope you enjoyed this little author spotlight um, of my bookshelves, and I'll be doing more of these in the future. So um, let me know in the comments if you've read anything by Lorraine Heath, if she's a favorite of yours like she is of mine, or let me know if any of these books sounded interesting or some of the series that you want to maybe pick up now. I would love to talk about it. I love to chat about Lorraine Heath reads. Um, yeah, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I'll see you in my next one.